You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today we are discussing the top five defenses in the AFC. I'm pre-recording videos for you guys all week, so just know that when you're seeing this, not sure the order them to put these in. Uh, it might have been a few days ago. It might have been yesterday. I don't know, but... I recorded this on Sunday, March 20th, so things might have changed. Some people might have been signed by the time this comes out for you guys, but I'm away for the week. I wanted to put out stuff for you all to watch, so don't yell at me in the comment section down below because somebody got signed on Thursday, and this came out on Friday, and I recorded this on Sunday. So top five defenses in the AFC. We're going to start from the bottom and work our way up to the top. So beginning with number five, I have because especially in the stretch run into the playoffs, this defense really impressed me and honestly looked like it got better despite a fairly significant injury on the D-line. The Cincinnati Bengals, man. Talk about a, a team that was able to fight through adversity and against all odds to be in the Super Bowl this past season. But a defense that slowly but surely started to find itself, especially later in the season and right into the playoffs going into that Super Bowl game. I mean, when Larry Ogunjobi went down, I was very concerned for this defense. And I had Bengals fans in my comment sections telling me, you know, don't worry about it. BJ Hill's going to be able to fill the role for him. And honestly, BJ Hill might be a better player than Ogunjobi is. And quite honestly... And he, the dude might be, he, I mean, the Bengals are willing to let Ogunjobi walk. Um, and realistically, they didn't really lose much to their defense. Their most significant losses to the D are Larry Ogunjobi and Vernon Hargraves. People were telling me that the Bengals are going to let go of Trey Waynes because he's due so much money. Well, the Bengals do have a lot of cap space still at this point. They're sitting at about 14 and a half million. They have about 11 million in potential cap. If they do end up letting go of Trey Waynes or potentially restructuring his deal might be a better route. Trey Waynes is a good depth guy. I don't know if he's at this point still able to compete at the higher level he was playing at when he was still in Minnesota, but this defense looked really good. I mean, they only allowed 22 points a game last season, 5.5 yards a play. That's a really good number. Um, their turnovers, they were at about 1.24 for the turnover margin. And the most impressive number, in my opinion here, which is interesting because I, I know some people are going to see that I have the Bengals in the top five and they're going to question why they were there. Well, they only allowed a scoring drive on 34% of drives played on defense. That's fourth best in the AFC. What is the number one goal for the defense? Do not let the other team score. I really like where this team is headed. I think that there's a lot of young talent on the defense that is currently on the rise and maybe some more unknown talent that if you're not a Bengals fan, you might not realize is there. Logan Wilson, pretty good linebacker. Uh, Mike Hilton, obviously, in the slot. Arguably one of the best slot corners in the league. You got Jesse Bates, probably the best safety in the NFL. I mean, there's a lot of really good talent on this defense. BJ Hill stepping in, taking the starting role over for Ogan Joby and doing damage. I mean, the run D and, and honestly the pressure that he brings. I, I like the Bengals. I think they're on the upswing. Could you argue somebody else at the number five spot? Maybe. But there's a lot of play, like a lot of defenses that dealt with injuries or just like are having some turnover right now. The Bengals come back with a fairly consistent group. Just about everyone that was there last year is going to be there again this year. Ogan Joby obviously being the big name, that's not. And quite honestly, I think that's fine because the defense arguably got better when he ended up going down anyways. Coming in at number four, we got ourselves the Indianapolis Colts. I considered putting them at number five, but the Yannick and Gakwe trade is probably the reason I have them here at number four the most. The Colts defense did a lot really well uh, last season, except the against the pass. And they ended up trading Rock Yassin for Yannick and Gakwe, which I'm totally okay with. Rock Yassin, it, it took him a little too long, in my opinion, to develop. And it, yeah, did he have his best season, I guess, per se? Yeah, sure, this past season, but the return for Yannick Ngakwe, 
I'll take Ngakwe over what we were getting out of Rocky Sin. Rocky Sin had a ton of penalties. He had nine his first season, six the second year, and then three just last year. And last year, I guess, was his best grading in coverage. But Yannick Ngakwe brought in 10 sacks last season on that Raiders defense. And that's something that the Colts really struggled with was getting after the quarterback. They were very low in the league. And I think they were second worst in the league with 150 pressures only. And they were definitely somewhere in like the bottom five or six, I believe in sacks, if I'm not mistaken as well. We needed somebody on the D line, a dog, a guy that can get after the quarterback to be aggressive and slow down some of these high powered offenses that are in the AFC. Our secondary got torched a lot because of the fact that realistically we could not pressure the quarterback. There was no, they had all day to throw. They did what they needed to do. And you know, that is what it is. One of the, and I say this all the time, one of the best ways you can improve your secondary is by improving your defensive line. Cause if they're covering for less time, it typically results in meaning you're getting sacks, you're getting pressure, forcing bad throws and the likes. So I like what the Colts do. They're the best team in the NFL in terms of turning the ball over. Uh, Darius Leonard has like mastered the peanut punch, which I'm all about. That is probably one of the most exciting things because Pat, uh, because I'll say this right now, peanut Tillman was phenomenal with the way he would strip the football out of everyone and seeing Darius Leonard go in there and pop that ball out with a swift punch every now and again. I love to, I love to see it. I don't know why players don't try to do it more. Yeah. I know it's a little bit risky, but Darius Leonard has that thing down to a science. He is a turnover machine on his own, but we got a fair amount of turnovers from other players as well. Isaiah Rogers, another young cornerback standout guy getting pretty good. Like to see his development there. Colts also have $40 million to play with. I'm assuming they're going to sign somebody, even though they have not done anything yet, but we'll see coming in at number three. Ooh, just punched my mic. We got ourselves the Tennessee Titans. I have the Tennessee Titans here for a team that dealt with so much adversity. I feel like I talked about this when I did the offenses as well. The Titans, no stranger to it. They had, I think they started a total of like, what was it? 70 something players at some point throughout the, or they had 70 some odd players throughout the entirety of the year play a snap, at least for them was like an NFL record. Despite all of that, to allow just about 21 points a game, a little bit under that, only 330 yards a game, 5.4 yards per play, and then to allow scores on only 37% of drives, their biggest issue was penalties. I mean, this defense is so good, and maybe it's because of the style Mark, Mike Vrabel coaches. He's he's kind of a loose cannon type of guy, uh, you know, not afraid to run his mouth, a tough guy mentality, you know, and maybe, maybe that rubs off on the defense a little bit in a way, in like a way where... You know, they, they play a little bit more aggressive and whatnot, and it, it's fine, but, I mean, they were 15th in the AFC in penalties, and they were averaging nearly seven penalties a game on defense. If they can cut down on that, the sky's the limit. Bud Dupree needs to step up a little bit and produce some more. He was their massive signing last year, and I don't think he had quite the year that everyone was expecting him to have, so hopefully another year in the system helps. But, I mean, their biggest losses were Rashawn Evans and, and Janoris Jenkins. So, I mean... You're not really losing a ton. They have a really good tandem safety. Uh, they have some pretty good. They have a pretty good, honestly, entire unit altogether on defense. The corner is probably their weakest spot right now. And I mean, maybe the draft. Not sure who's left in free agency that they could go after. I know Razul Douglas just resigned with the Packers. Carlton Davis is resigned with the Bucks. Uh, but maybe they can find some value in free agency if their money is right. Ultimately. I really like what the Tennessee Titans do. I'm a Colts fan and I have them graded so highly because I respect the hell out of Mike Vrabel and I respect the hell out of what they do on defense. The the fact that their defense was as good as it was last, and I know that it was the Bengals and I understand their offensive line was not good, but holy hell what they were able to do in that playoff game against that Cincinnati team. Unbelievable stuff. They have a excellent pass rush, excellent pass rush. I like the Titans at number three coming in at number two. And if you followed my channel throughout the entirety of this past season, you probably heard me say it a lot and I'll say it again right here. Denver had a championship caliber defense. They still, and now even more so have a championship caliber defense. Justin Simmons, one of the best safeties, if not potentially the best safety in the league, Bradley Chubb now paired with Randy Gregory, which I think is going to 
it's going to it's going to make a world of a difference. I think Chubb has missed having a guy on the opposite side of him to help him be as effective as he was that rookie year when Von Miller was, you know, doing his thing wrecking defenses and nobody was accounting for Chubb and he got his 16 sacks his rookie year. I like the Gregory signing. DJ Jones going to shore up the interior of that defense as well. They also signed Alex Singleton at linebacker. This is a defense that allowed only 18.9 points per game last year. Third in the AFC, only allowing 5.3 yards per play. Third best scoring percentage defense, allowing scores on only just under 33% of drives played. So they were allowing a score on only a third of their defensive drives, less than that, because the number is specifically 32.7. Not too bad when it comes to penalties. Could be a little bit better. They're 10th in the AFC. Your biggest losses are Kyle Fuller, who I really don't think they're going to miss too much if they don't bring him back. He's still a free agent at the time of me recording this. Kareem Jackson, while aging out, still a fairly effective safety, but I'm assuming that they have a plan or maybe they're eyeballing somebody, whether it's a younger player in free agency still available, or maybe they had their eye on one of the younger safeties that were available. They still have 14 million to play with, or maybe they're going after someone in the draft. And I know there's not like a premier top tier safety that they might be going after, but maybe as someone in the mid rounds, they think they could get for good value that they can develop and learn under Justin Simmons. The defense is still championship caliber. I'm really excited for what the Broncos are going to do. Uh, My Broncos fans, I'm sure you are as well. Smash that like button for uh, Russell Wilson there. Go Denver. I don't know what they say. I know he said go Hawks in Seattle. I don't know what he's going to say over there in Denver. But uh, Broncos country. Uh, But yeah, Denver at number two, man. Honestly, one of the best, if and arguably potentially, I I don't know, maybe not. I think they're the second best defense in the AFC because the number one, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree with this, especially after the Vaughn Miller signing has got to be the Buffalo Bills. Listen, they ranked first in like every statistical category at the end of the season. Points per game allowed, yards per game allowed, yards per play allowed. Their turnover margin was second only to the Colts because the Colts have, you know, peanut punch Leonard over here. Then they also had best scoring percentage, 28% of their defensive drives, they allowed a a score. That's literally almost a fourth of their defensive drives. That's ludicrous, all right? Penalty-wise, middle of the pack in the AFC, they were averaging about six penalties a game, not bad. If that gets even better, this defense gets a world, world, like on another world better. They lost a few people, so there is some concern. I think they'll be able to make up for it, though. Just based off the signings that they made alone, it's going to really help things out. They lost Harrison Phillips to Minnesota. Levi Wallace is also gone. Jerry Hughes and Mario Addison, who accounted for a handful of sacks, I think like 13 combined or so, somewhere or maybe a little bit less than that, or give or take. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Uh, they do lose a handful of sacks there from those two players. Whether they do bring any of those guys back or not remains to be seen. Probably not, though, considering they signed Vaughn Miller. You also got Daquan Jones. Tim Settle, who I talked about at length in a video because I really think he is an excellent, excellent like depth signing because he does a really good job in the limited snaps he's had when he was in Washington. And then Jordan Phillips as well, another solid depth guy. Honestly, the only thing that they really need to figure out now is just secondary. This defense, though, set up well and they're ready to go. And they were already the best last season. And realistically, I think that they're going to be better this year. I I don't know. Give me a reason for why they're not going to be. I, they brought in Von Miller, who's clearly still playing at a high level. They were willing to give him a crap ton of money in free agency. And I think Von Miller still got it. We'll have to see how it goes, but I like Bills at number one. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. That's my top five defenses for the AFC. I'll catch you guys next time.